Hello, everyone. Um, I'm su super excited to be here today. Um, I'm John Farjo, co-founder and chief product officer of Lunar Crush, which is a social listening tool for cryptocurrencies. Um, we track about uh, 2,000 different cryptocurrencies out there, including many in the DeFi space. Um, I'll tell you more about us in a moment, but uh, first I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the incredible, I'll call it parabolic activity um, that we're seeing across the DeFi space. Uh, I'll start with uh, a few examples here. So uh, Acropolis, uh, just over the last month, that is not a typo, um, social volume has increased 976.2%. And what that means is it means every time someone mentions uh, Acropolis, the ticker, uh, variants of terms, um, we count that as a social mention. And how that looks is something like this, uh, which looks like almost 17,000 mentions. And the price along that time, again, also not a typo, over three months, is up 1800%. Uh, when we look at uh, Aave, um, when we look at social engagement, that's up 576.4%. And what engagement measures is deeper social interactions, things like retweets and, and likes and comments. Um, it typically indicates that you have a more engaged community. And what that looks like, um, it looks like 46 million engagements over six months, while the price is also up 909%. Uh, Bancor, uh, looking at news, and we collect news from thousands of different websites out there, um, not just one or two sources. Uh, that's up 424.6% uh, over the past three months, as price is also up 1120%. And when we go deeper, you know, it's almost seeming like every day we're adding a new project in the DeFi space to LunarCrush.com. And uh, just to point out a few that are, are brand new, really, in the last month or two, uh, Compound. Over 50,000 social mentions in the last two months. A DMM, which is awesome, and it's uh, over 30, almost 34,000 in just the last month. And there's Ample Fork, which has 30, almost, but almost 33,000 as well over the last month. And this is all great, um, but what does it mean? You know, we get the question every day. Great, but what does this mean for price? How does it correlate? And we track that as well. And so we have what we call a correlation rank. And when we look at correlation rank, if something's ranking um, or typically two, two or below, it's just not correlated. Um, and not every coin is equal in this, but uh, on this one to five scale, if something's very, uh, very correlated, it's a five. And when we see just in general, I could point out pretty much any project in the DeFi space right now. Here's three examples where 0x is uh, it's as, as high as 4.3 out of five, very correlated. Reserve rights, um, 4.1 out of five. DMM, governance token, 4.4 out of 5. And so what that means is as social activity moves, so does price. And so we look at all of that. And I want to back up and say, well, great. Um, what, is all, what are we doing here? Um, really, it's about transparency. As we say at Lunar Crush, without community, there's no crypto. And um, we bring transparency. If you look at that um, from the standpoint of uh, a Twitter feed, you know, you're, you're captive to whoever you're following. And we, you know, when we started investing in crypto a number of years ago, we were looking at this going, gosh, I don't just want my followers. I want to know everything that's going on. And I don't just want Twitter. I want, I want to know Medium and YouTube and on and on and on. I want to know what's going on. So we measure all that. And how that looks is through, you know, we measure that through 2,000 coins specifically. So far, we've collected about 250 million plus posts. And on an average day, it's about 400 to 500,000 posts. Uh, we've collected almost up to a million posts in a day before when, uh, when the Twitter hack happened a few weeks ago. Um, we have our own AI machine learning system that we've uh, built from the ground up and trained to be crypto specific. And that looks at sentiment all the way from very bullish to very bearish. And it looks at spam collection. It's gotten very, very accurate with spam collection, which is, again, another thing that we have to, uh, to, to try and weed out of our, of our useful feeds, hopefully. Um, and we do this. I say useful because we, we try to take all this data and present it to users in useful ways. And we do that through a number of different social metrics, looking at different elements of the social sphere out there. And we have, I should say, on top of all of the standard market metrics that you might expect. Um, and we also have some key metrics that we've created, such as Galaxy Score, uh, which looks at the health of a coin specifically over time, and then AltRank, which looks at the health of a coin relative to the entire market. And we also, as I showed earlier, we have our correlation rank. And we do all of this through LunarCrush.com, which is completely free to sign up for. Um, it's growing like crazy. It's super fun. Um, you can go in there and see real-time social insights with any of those metrics I just showed. 
but we also have some pretty interesting new types of things that are they're also pretty fun to play around with like we can tell you who's most influential on the market right now in real time we can tell you who's most influential per coin over time or for various time time periods i should say um, and we also have dev tools which um, looks like our real-time websocket api our widgets um, we have a trading view library integration as well so so go check out lunacrush.com it's free uh, but back to DeFi. so uh, i wanted to pull up some relative comparisons and i threw bitcoin and ethereum in here just an example and i, I almost want to exclude Chainlink because it's so big um, when you look at the space in general when we look at a lot of the DeFi projects we're seeing less than 3,000 social mentions on a 24-hour basis, typically. And so when we look at that, you know, relative to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, and today's just, I would say, a, it's a good day, but it's not a super outstanding day for Bitcoin, um, like when the Twitter hack happened or when the halving happened. Um, and Bitcoin has 127,000 mentions. So I just wanted to give you a relative understanding of where these projects in DeFi stack up. Let's also look at social engagements, and that's, again, deeper... Um, comments, retweets, likes, that sort of thing. Um, we're typically seeing below 4.4 million social engagements on, on any given day. Relative to Bitcoin, over 400 million. Relative to Ethereum, 90 million. Um, I'm excluding Chainlink from this because it is so big, but we're seeing about 18 million there on a daily basis. When we look at the individuals, we measure actual individual user accounts that are, that are in the space uh, posting about every coin. And we typically see on a daily basis, it's like in the hundred range uh, on some of these projects or lower. So I, I mentioned all this to, to like show you that it's, yes, things are growing really fast, but it's still really early. And so when we say it's really early, what are some of the things that we could do to improve and to grow these communities? And that, that means um, not just what the projects themselves can do, but also if you're a fan of the project and investor, what are some things that you can do to contribute in the community? And so I'd like to give just, you know, I want to give some simple tips and then some uh, more complex things that are more fundamental towards social. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, set benchmarks and optimize against them. And this applies, again, if you're a, a, an investor or a fan of a project or the project themselves, set benchmarks. You know, like I want 50 new followers a day, 100 followers a day. I want, I want that to translate into 10 signups a day. And if you're not doing it and you won't do it at first, keep optimizing against that. And as you do that, the second thing would be to post consistent, relative high quality content. We're looking at this stuff all day and there are a lot of posts that could be better out there. Um, you know, saying gonna moon a ticker isn't really that valuable. It might be a little bit of a short term engagement, but what can we do to create more content that drives engagement? And the third point really is on, the, on engagement. Uh, don't just post top level posts and walk away. Really great. We see this all the time, every single day. Really great posts, and then the the, the project or whoever posted it goes away, and there's a whole stre a whole stream going on. Engage, get in there, create a following. Um, the fourth thing is uh, another thing that's super fun to do, a lot of work, um, and we all need to like as a community get better at it. Is live streaming and podcasts. Um, definitely, like like get out there, go do it. It's tough, but if we all can become you know more um, kind of collaborative and get on these live streams together, um, it creates a, a greater community. The fifth point is uh, super simple and easy. And we see all the time, no tickers used, no hashtags used, typos in the name of the project that you're talking about. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things. So this is a really simple one. Um, so I just encourage you to use proper tickers and hashtags. It shows up more, it's good for you. Number six is uh, use sparingly, very sparingly as much as you can. Um, if it's relevant, tag a user in a post. Um, you know, for example, if you have a collaboration with another project, if there's something major going on, tag those users, let them know that it's, that it's out there, and then they end up sharing it. So it amplifies, so it's a really good thing. Uh, the seventh thing is, is there's a lot of groups out there. Y yes, we're all on Telegram and things like that, but Facebook, there's actually more than you believe on Facebook going on inside of groups. We like to say it's, it's the only last freebie on Facebook. Uh, because you can actually post to your page and share to those groups and you get some engagement on that. It's pretty good. Even LinkedIn and there's on and on there. Um, but I want to look at this a little different. Um, so those are just simple things that we can all do. Uh, but when you look at social media, it is not just a person you hire that manages your account for you. It, it's much more fundamental. 
Um, it's much more something that needs to be baked into the, your, your customer journey, into an ecosystem. And I'd like to talk about that. And this stuff's a lot more complex, but very, very important. So if you look at just, we talk about UX, UI, we talk about user experience all the time. Wrapped around that is your service experience, all of the different inquiries and customer service and all of that. And all that combined makes up your customer experience. And we look at social as something that's kind of wrapped around all of that. And if I were to just draw this linear, and this is just hypothetical, you know, you might look at maybe a user experience is a, a user is researching uh, your offering on your website, but can they share it? Can they share those amazing rates that 8.1% just for holding Bitcoin? Um, can they, is there a comparison with bank rates? Can they share that very easily? Uh, can they refer a friend when they sign up? Or when they view educational content, can they share that very easily? Uh, maybe they just received a payment. Can they, are they alerted when they're paying? Uh, is, is there a rewards program that you have? And can they interact with that as they almost gamifying the user to make them use it more? Um, maybe they're a long-term user. Can they join an advocacy program and get on there? Um, so these are things to look at. And I want to give you a few examples of some things that we've observed and we've done even on our own. Well, we, we noticed that people like to share our data on our website. And they do this a lot on, on all of our websites out there. Like, hey, that's cool. Take a screenshot, post it to Twitter. And we were seeing things exactly like this, like cut off navigation and weird things going on and, and just strange. It didn't make sense. And the data was outdated when they were posting it. So what we did was we said, okay, well, let's build a, uh, a sharing system. Let's bake it into our application and let's make it easier to share and let's make it a lot cleaner. So if someone wants to share a chart, uh, it's perfectly formatted for Twitter. They can download it. They can copy the URL, they can tweet it. And if they hit tweet one button, we pull over on the right there, uh, we pull in some real-time data into that. And the, the, the chart is in the share image without having to download it and all that. And it's, tra and it's tracked and eventually we'll reward them for doing that share. And so going from just an abstract thing to just two taps and you're done, makes it a lot more streamlined for that user experience. And it gives us another social interaction point. Um, another example is, we, you know, we've had a lot of growth and we've had a lot of page, like our page views keep going up. Uh, the duration of our sessions keep going up. And as that's happened, people have, you know, they're becoming more reliant on our tool, trying to see this information, but they're coming back to us saying, Hey, I, there's just so much I, I need, I need to be alerted. And so, you know, if, if you can't alert me, if you can't get in front of me, um, then I, I'm going to, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss the trade. I'm going to miss the opportunity. And so what I'm here to announce a little bit here is that we are uh, in the process of testing, we're in alpha testing uh, social alerts. And what that'll do is um, you can have configurable alerts based on any social metric. Um, and those can send out to lots of places like Telegram or an SMS or an email, or just to our website, it's up to you. Um, and those social alerts will um, work hand in hand with the sharing on the website. So every time we alert someone, it'll bring them back to that site and it creates a cycle of sharing and social, social sharing across the board. So with that, um, that was my quick update for the day. So um, if you'd like any more information, um, you can always message me on Twitter at, at John Farjo, but um, please go check out lunarcrush.com and uh, check us out on Twitter at, at lunarcrush.